Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Philanthropy Friday. I'm Mark Halpern. I'm your host, and it's so wonderful to have a large group of people who have registered for today's session, and we come from across the section of, of industry. Most of the people are professional advisors. We also have people involved in the charity space, fundraising, uh, foundations, philanthropists, and just regular voyeurs, people who just want to know what's out there. And I'm really excited today because we have a topic that, as far as I'm concerned, is probably the best kept secret in Canada. The best kept secret in Canada. And by the end of this session today, the secret hopefully will be out of the bag and you're going to want to get involved and you're going to share this information with all the people in your in your networks because it's it's pretty exciting stuff i'm i'm 33 years in professional practice we work with some of canada's uh most successful business owners entrepreneurs and affluent families in three areas one is in estate planning making sure that their financial architecture and financial furniture actually lines up with today's reality. The second area that we're involved with is tax mitigation strategies. We specialize in tax exempt insurance. And the third area that we're involved with is philanthropy, which is really helping clients to create enduring family legacies, often just by converting taxes into charity. And there are so many different ways to do this. But one of those ways is through the use of donor advised funds. And we're very fortunate. And we have a couple of guests that I'm going to introduce in just a moment. Um, but there's a couple of pieces of housekeeping. One is we have a chat box. So along the way, something comes up, you want to question somebody, please, please uh, put your question in there. Secondly is, you know, you'll be able to contact our, our guests later on. They're, they're full of wisdom and knowledge that I know is going to help you in your personal and professional lives as well, which is great. But just in terms of why we do what we do, we have a mission. It's threefold. One is we're trying to transform Canadian philanthropy by inspiring and educating professional advisors like yourself, charities, and donors that they should be incorporating strategic philanthropy into their estate planning. Right now, most people are just giving because somebody asked them to sponsor a bike ride to Barry to help conquer cancer, and that's about the extent of it. Second thing is insurance is really an, uh, an asset class that doesn't get a lot of respect. And most people know what it is, but very few people understand what it actually can do. And we want to change that to help people understand what it actually does. And finally, we're trying to create a national network of 100 charities and professional advisors that if each of us are creating $10 million a year, and you've got 100 of those, that's a billion dollars. And that's not like sort of uh, pie in the sky. It's more like crowdfunding. And we really want to invest in that knowledge with all of you to help you hopefully step up and want to be part of our program. And our, you know, everybody, if you have a, a, a mission in life, you know, what is it? Like we, like what's your why? What gets you up in the morning? So our why is the word tzedakah, which is a Hebrew word that's often mistranslated as charity. What it really means is righteousness or justice. We have an obligation to give back if you are, are, you have. We've created over $120 million over the last two years. And people ask us, why do we share all of our secrets? Like, why don't we, why aren't we territorial? And we say there's two ways to give charity. I can either write a check myself or we can get other people to write checks. And if we get them to write checks, we can create way more than just me writing a check. So all I ask is if you like this information, reach out to us, uh, collaborate, don't ignore it, and certainly share your success. Last thing, which I think is really important from a tax point of view. You know, the government just increased capital gains taxes on June the 25th for anything over $250,000. Instead of giving 27% of your success, you're now going to be giving 36% of your success. So there are many ways that we have to mitigate those taxes or keep those taxes for family or charity. But you must understand from a charitable point of view, charitable donations can be used in any given year to mitigate up to 75% of net taxable income. And those donations, if they're over 75%, can be carried forward for up to five years. That most people know about. But the second part, I'm, you know, we've done this presentation for KPMG, PWC, m and like they're great people. They do an amazing tax work up to here, but there's a shelf above called philanthropy. And most people don't realize that charitable donations 
at death can be used to mitigate 100% of estate taxes, including going back the prior year, which means that if you have a million dollar tax bill and you create a $2 million gift out of assets or out of insurance and leave that to charity, now your million dollars of tax becomes a million dollars of charity. That's why we always talk about incorporating it into your, into your uh, estate planning. Next, life insurance can be owned and paid for by a charity, by a private foundation, and by a donor advised fund, as we'll hear from our guest today. We went through a whole thing with alternative minimum tax. Just know there's no alternative minimum tax on death when it pertains to giving to charity. And lastly, the world out there is still 97% of the population is still giving cash, checks, and credit cards to charity, which are the most cost and inefficient way to give. I'm not telling you to stop, but there are way more ways that you could give more for less cost or give the same amount for less cost. And that's why today we're really excited to have our guests and we're really delighted. We've got Dan Kite, who's the founder of GiveWise, GiveWise out, out, out West, the GiveWise Foundation. And we also have Adam Hummel here in Toronto, who is the VP of Operations for My Charity Fund. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for joining us and welcome to today's segment. Thanks for having us. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks so much for the opportunity to uh, speak with you, Mark. Fantastic. So before we get started, I'd love to find out a little bit about you guys, you know, and then we'll get into, we'll dive into uh, donor advised funds. But you guys come from very unique backgrounds to find yourselves here in the charitable space or the donor advised fund space, you know. Why don't we start with you, uh, Dan? We'll, we'll start with you and just tell us like who you are, how'd you get here? Okay, great. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, my wife, uh, Tammy, and I uh, were a part of the group of co-founders of, of GiveWise Foundation. So I am one of the founders. And um, uh, two, two uh, main points are that um, GiveWise wasn't our idea, but uh, we were uh, we're action-oriented people, and so we were ones to uh, help drop the engine in the bus, put wheels on it, and get behind the steering wheel. Um, <clears throat> and two, I wasn't looking for a new career. Uh, I was 45, and uh, my wife, Tammy, and I had successfully built a single-family boutique home-building business. We were getting to build beautiful homes, multi-family, uh, sorry, multi-million dollar single-family homes. I uh, wasn't looking for a new job, but uh, I always say God has a sense of humor. So um, we were introduced to the concept of DAFs because as business owners and many people out there can relate, our income profile did this. Thankfully, it was mainly up and to the right. I don't know which way to go on the screen here uh, with my hand, but, um, you know, we could have really benefited from a DAF a long time ago. In the big earning years, the years where the, the market's humming, everything's going well, big profits, um, you know, we could have established a DAF and we realized that would have been a fantastic vehicle to even out our giving in the years where there wasn't so much income. 2008, when the uh, entire market, just the tap turned off in terms of, of housing and, and all kinds of parts of the sector, would have been amazing. So... Um, a couple of years after we introduced the DAFs, we were introduced by the group that uh, had the idea for an online charitable donor advised fund that was the, the, the idea, the concept was to democratize the DAF. So uh, it caught our attention. We were asked to come on as board members first. And then we were asked, well, you know, we just got our Canadian, our CRA registered status. Can you help us get bank accounts? A what like a website going just the basics of any small business and then we found ourselves deeper and deeper to the point where we walked away from our home business because the idea of making a dent in the universe the charitable you know the charitable giving universe uh had a strong pull for us um because our couple our mantra as a couple has always been we are blessed in order to be a blessing to others and so so yeah, that's that's the basics, yeah. and that was 2018 on to today, and now we're six six plus years in operation, and we've been doubling in size as a foundation every year except 2022 because wow. the markets markets 
weren't that great in 2022. So Dan, that's a great story. Listen, you obviously have some very strong DNA in your soul. I know you guys are a religious family. We are too. You know, it definitely speaks to us. And there's nothing like doing good and doing well, you know, and helping other people to do good and do well as well. So I'm, I can't wait to hear more about that. Adam, as the VP of operations over at my my uh, my charity fund. .ca, like you come from a very interesting background because you're really a you're really a lawyer, right? And a state litigator, or doing yeah. Well, don't don't uh, don't tell anyone that. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, so my background is is in law, uh, actually. So about ten years, about uh, 12, 13, 14 years ago now, um, I was in law school, and while I was in law school, I also had an opportunity to get involved in the not for profit space, and I helped set up. A, uh, a not-for-profit in Kenya. I traveled over to Kenya a couple of times and helped uh, some youth set up um, a, a peace building project there after a civil conflict in 2008. And um, from that, I ended up uh, actually being invited to give a TED Talk in 2013, uh, which was a really cool opportunity. And I called the TED Talk Redefining Philanthropy. And the idea of my TED Talk was that the word philanthropy literally means a lover of humanity. And I wanted to make clear uh, that people do not need to be millionaires or billionaires and give that amount of wealth to uh, the world to be to be known as philanthropists. You should just it should be about uh, your intention and giving what you can give to become a philanthropist. And so, uh, you know, I've always been motivated by the idea that uh, those who have the ability to take action have the responsibility to take action. Uh, and, uh, and, and that is the, sort of the basis of what my TED talk was like. And then after that, I went back into my, uh, law career and I have spent the last 12 years specializing in, uh, estates and trusts, uh, litigation and really trying to understand that. But as part of that, uh, I've really had in the back of my mind always, um, legacy planning, how legacy planning can go wrong and how important it is, uh, to make sure that your plans are really set up from the beginning. And so, and to, and to be able to share that with your family and to share your intentions and desires with your family. And so, um, through all of that, I was kind of just, uh, doing the, doing the, the, the law route. And then last year I met with the guys at my charity fund. It was started, uh, about seven years ago by, um, Mayor Plonka and Surly Wolf. Um, and Jordi Superior, uh, is also someone who's been involved. Jordy and I bumped into each other last year randomly. He started telling me about my charity fund. And I said, this is amazing. How can I be involved? Uh, uh, I, uh, law is one thing, but I'll do whatever I can to help people be passionate about philanthropy as well. And uh, that's uh, what happened. I jumped in um, and I joined on with these guys who have really, um, from the ground up, built up my charity fund uh, from uh, also a very grassroots beginning of uh, listening to people who wanted to, uh, in, in their community, who wanted to find a vehicle to give charity easily um, and jumping on board to to what they have been able to grow over this time and uh, seeing how I can contribute to making sure that people know not only about what MCF does, obviously, but uh, really educating people about DAFs, which is, uh, like you said at the beginning, really a, a secret, I think in the uh, Canadian charity land space. It, well, it's great, great background. It's so interesting that your life experiences kind of brought you to where you are. Like I look at myself in the insurance business. My dad died 50 years ago when I was 11 and he didn't have any, a will, didn't have any savings, didn't have insurance that, you know, it was tough for us, but that inspired me to see how other people are in the same situation, how they need it. So it's really interesting. Look at guys. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, you know, a lot of people think when we start talking about charity and we talk about foundations and donor advice funds, obviously we have to understand the terms, but you know, a lot of people think that you're, you have to be Warren Buffett or Bill Gates to be a philanthropist. And I just want to talk high level. Uh, and people are, by the way, are asking this on the chat as well, which is, is good. Like, what's the difference between a private foundation and a donor advice fund? And then taking that down even one step further, what's the difference between a donor advice fund that's part of a community foundation and one that you're doing online? So, you know, maybe I'll start just the private foundation. You guys can go into the donor advice fund. To say private foundations are generally set up by wealthier people who are putting away a, 
couple million dollars into a foundation. There's some startup costs, annual reporting. You manage your own money. It's completely transparent on the Sierra website, all the stuff you have and you're doing and who's on your board, et cetera. And it's kind of a lot for do-it-yourself typers. That's, that's really an exceptionally small group of people in the world. And then you've got community foundations, right, which are borrowing. They're kind of like the governance of compliance. You're borrowing their, you know, their umbrella and you're putting in your donor advised fund or your named foundation underneath them and you're using it. And that's also known as a donor advised fund, right? So why don't you guys give us a little bit more help here to understand how the donor advised fund works and how it's different. Yeah, so I, I don't mind jumping in. Um, I'll, I'll use a phrase from Dan's industry, which is in building, which is that uh, DAF is, is kind of like a, a turnkey foundation. It is, uh, is the, the DAF itself is already, um, is already a foundation. The foundation is set up. We've, uh, whether it's uh, GiveWise or My Charity Fund, we've already done the heavy lifting in terms of getting registered with the CRA, doing the reporting and making sure that all the administration is done. All you have to do is move in. You have to uh, come in as uh, and set and and go in, set up your DAF, and without uh, the uh, the money that's required to set up a, a foundation, without the like as you said, without the public reporting that's required with the CRA, without all the money you have to put in to hire lawyers or accountants to help set up and make sure that you're complying with all the reporting obligations. Uh, and so it's really just picture it as that pre-built house that's already that's already there. You've done everything. You can move in, move your money in, set up your own DAF and do what you will with that money in terms of funding your DAF, getting your tax receipt, and then um, and then getting uh, that charity out to different charities uh, without having to uh, report to the CRA. It's private um, and a, a lot of the hard work has already been done by the by the builder. I like that definition. Dan, do you want yeah. to add anything to that? Yeah, thank, I like the building analogy, Adam. Great um, analogy. Yeah, so there are there are other very important um, differences, and one um, I'll talk private foundations, and then maybe we can we can also explain difference between community foundations at, uh, after this. But um, the ironic thing is a private foundation that that's a it's an ironic term because as a public foundation, GiveWise Foundation and My Charity Fund are actually quite private for donors all the way to the point where the donor can choose to be anonymous when they make a gift out to a charity. But especially their giving is anonymous to the public. A private foundation, um, if, if someone I know, you know, if a Frank, uh, you know, if a Frank Smith uh, family foundation is out there, I can go on the CRA website, I can actually look up readily publicly available information it's all there, who they grant to, their financials. Um, so as a family or private foundation, they're kind of, uh, the emperor has no clothes. And so that is actually disconcerting to some people I know who who run private foundations or whose family has one. And they realize, oh, that's why I get all of this unsolicited mail. Because if they've given to, let's say, a portion of their foundation's funds to a um, a certain sec part of the charitable sector, you know, a certain type of charity, all of a sudden they're getting inundated with mail because the the fundraisers from the charities are paid to comb through this information and say, okay, we are going to send grant proposals by the dozens to anyone who's given in this sector. Sure. And so so that is a huge difference. So with a with a, a, a my charity fund account or we call them giving funds at GiveWise Foundation with a giving fund, you are fully private. The only thing that that um, only thing that gets reported is to CRA the amount of your donation and the fact that it was to the to GiveWise or or to my charity fund. It's interesting, Dan. On that, I I believe there are a lot of private foundations. Once they find that out, they realize, yeah. oh. Yep. I want to move my private foundation to a donor advised fund and keep it private. And because it's being moved from one charitable foundation to another, there's yep. no, no taxation, no distributed, just like yep. donating money. So that's something to know about. For that's sure. something to know about. And the private foundation can still, if, if the family wants to keep it intact and wants to keep that structure going, they don't have to fold the private foundation. They could actually just do all of their giving through a donor advised fund. I'll call them DAFs through a DAF. 
yeah. right? So they could actually just shift, make a, a once, like you say, charity to charity transfer, foundation to foundation transfer, no extra costs. And now what happens is, is on their um, T3010, you know, their, their reporting to CRA, all it shows is a, um, all it shows is a gift out to another foundation. It doesn't, then it doesn't uh, show which causes um, that family is is specifically supporting. Okay. Um, and some families, of course, like private foundations that support the children's hospitals across Canada, fantastic. Let people know that you believe in this and that you want to get behind it. That's all great. But if there's some things that people you know, want to give to and they don't want to be inundated, these, that's where it's really great. Another... Um, is an advanced scenario, but it's becoming increasingly popular, is um, a public foundation such as GiveWise can accept preferred shares of privately held corporation. And then what happens is that donation, especially if someone's selling a business or planning on, that's how they're moving their estate to the next generation. There's all kinds of amazing solutioning scenarios we can make with that, that private, if, if a family owns a business and runs a private foundation, they can't have the PREF shares gifted to their private foundation. As far as I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what we've encountered. And now we've been able to help generations. And this is, you talk about the best kept secret being a donor advised fund. I think donor advised funds in combination with life insurance is another level of best kept secret because you combine this whole scenario of PREF shares with that, maybe I'm getting too technical, but talk to us, ask us specific questions about your scenario after this, contact us because rather than paying massive amounts of tax, there's an opportunity there for um, PREF shares to be donated, creating a massive, uh, sometimes massive, but a larger amount than most people ever thought they could give away donation pot or giving fund. And then the life insurance can cover off um, all kinds of the cash, uh cash implications of, of estate taxes or yeah. selling a business dan you you've touched on all of the stuff we will come to but there's no question private most people who are listening today know that you can donate non-registered appreciated public securities like stocks etfs mutual funds segregated funds but most people don't realize that you can actually donate private company shares so today especially with people doing estate freezes and having preferred shares and there's a big tax bill attached to it. There are ways to use insurance and donor advised funds, foundations to, to mitigate that tax, create huge uh, legacies for families and make sure that your family gets back the shares, which is great. Just for full disclosure here, I'm a client of GiveWise. I have a donor advised fund there. I have two donor advised funds at my charity fund. And I've got two donor advised funds at a community foundation. So I'm just saying this is not a one and done thing, right? But I do realize that there's such great advantages. So let's talk about getting it set up for a second, because really, you know, I, I, I always feel that the, the way to get started is you just have to open up an account. Like how quickly, Dan and Adam, could you have your very own family foundation utilizing a donor advised fund today how quickly could you do it three to five minutes literally mark three I, to five minutes i, I was going to say two to four but uh you know there we go you, oh, probably, you, <laughs> Adam, you probably navigate on the keyboard faster you're a lawyer you know yeah yeah exactly exactly how yeah. amazing and and what's the minimum amount to get started in setting up a donor advised fund <laughs> So, we, so with uh, MCF, we have two different kinds of accounts. One is a cash account, which is sort of like a like a giving wallet where you can fund your account. Uh, you, you set up your DAF, uh, you put the money into it. Uh, there's no minimum. You can get your uh, tax. No, no minimum. So somebody can put $10 in. For a cash account, own. absolutely. You can go in right now to our website, see if I'm right about two to four minutes, uh, fund it with uh, $5 and, and set it up. Um, and immediately get a tax receipt, and then your money will be sitting there, uh, and you can decide whether you want to donate it to any one of Canada's, you know, 87,000 plus charities. Uh, you can donate it now, or you can wait and do it in a couple months, a couple years, whatever. And then our other vehicle is a, is a growth account, which is an opportunity to put money in. We do have a minimum of a deposit of $10,000 for our growth accounts. 
you can put that money in. Again, as soon as you put that money in, monies, securities, unrealized, uh, uh, unrealized securities, anything like that can go into your growth account. You will get your tax receipt for the full value of what you put in. Um, and, um, and then you can uh, start to grow that money um, in that. So our minimum there is $10,000, but that's our vehicle for growing funds. How do, you, how do you grow it? Do you grow it for them or they grow it with their advisors? So it's a great question. We have uh, two opportunities. One is if someone has their own financial advisor who they've used in their family for years and who is well aware of what their, um, their, their philanthropic goals are, what their financial growth goals are, they can use their own advisor to uh, take over that growth account and make sure that it gets uh, grown. Um, in the alternative, if they don't have someone who they already use with their family, then we do have a relationship with uh, Nicola Wealth. And Nicola Wealth, um, they're wonderful, and um, they can come uh, step in and manage uh, one's growth account for them as well. I hope everybody heard this. If you're a professional investment advisor listening to this, and people are always afraid of giving up their assets under management. Oh, they want to help their clients give charity. They want to help themselves, but I'm going to lose all those assets under management. You realize that with with GiveWise, with with my charity fund, with Canada Gives, with Benefaction, with you know, uh, there are a number of these sort of donor advised funds. You as an advisor can still manage those assets, which means. It makes so much sense for us to be telling our clients about this. Even Absolutely. if we didn't have the assets under management, it's a great thing. But the fact that you can so and Dan, what about your on your end? What's the minimum yeah. over there? So parallel, um, except so um, first of all, zero minimums. You can open an account in that, you know, two to four, three to five minutes, zero minimums. Our investment uh, accounts, so we, we call it a giving wallet as well. There's so many awesome parallels here. And you know what? Because so few Canadians know, the vast majority of Canadians don't know about DAFs, there's room in the market. So it's not like I'm looking at going, my charity fund, they're a competitor. This is There's room to play in this sandbox. for And, and, and so I'm excited that it's happening. Um, $25,000 minimum for starting to invest. And one thing that it, financial advisors need to know is that they actually, on those charitable funds, they receive their at-market fees. So we know that financial advisors, um, we know how they make their living. And so we know that fees are a very necessary thing. And we are, we, we don't, uh, you know, we're happy to pay the at-market uh, fees that financial advisors need to charge to manage these accounts. So we're 25 and we have a relationship with Asante Wealth Management, not official, but I just mean we have some Asante Wealth Managers who are happy to take on um, the, the idea of these these clients because GiveWise Foundation is a um, has become a fairly large client um, with CIS. That, that's actually one of my, that's like really one of my favorite parts of this job is uh, talking to some of these financial advisors and seeing the look on their face when we explain how it can work in terms of managing these growth accounts. Because I think that, uh, you know, Dan's right. There is a lot of space to play in this, in this sandbox. Canada as a society is incredibly philanthropic. Um, and when it comes to how many uh, wealth advisors and financial advisors there are in the space here, um, it's really cool to be able to say to them, listen, we are happy to facilitate philanthropic giving and you are not, you know, handing over those funds out of the, portfolio that you're managing and that money is just going away all you're doing is uh, is passing the money through uh, my charity fund givewise as that vehicle for philanthropic giving and then you get those assets back under your management to help your clients uh hit their philanthropic goals clearly while you can continue to make uh the fees that you need to make on those on those trades and so that is like the, the look on their faces that we get, which I, I assume all 300 people watching this today have the same look on their faces. Uh, it's, it's really a, a great part of this job because it's such an interesting, um, it's such an interesting uh, uh, thing here that people can uh, take advantage of. Yeah, and I, and I just want to add as a, as a user, right? I love going to my donor advised fund. Like I can do it on my phone as well, right? Like I just go to, and, and if somebody asks me for a donation for something, and it happens all the time. I can yep. just go to my donor advice fund. I've got a balance in there, right? And I just hit, I do a scroll down 
on the charity. I put the amount. I, I can put a message to the charity. I can say that it's in the merit of somebody to honor them or for, you know, they passed away, whatever the case might be. And I push a button and it's, it's automatic. And, and also I only get one when I put money into my donor advised funds, be it uh, stock or, or cash. Now I'm getting one charitable receipt instead of at the end of the year when my account's going, okay, how much charity did you give? And I have to go around and collect those receipts from the hundreds yep. of charities that I've given to, Oh, did I give to the Canadian cancers? One receipt. Do you have any idea how nice that is when we're so busy and so distracted already? It really is. It's really a big blessing guys. Yeah. And, and Mark, I agree with you so much. And numbers tell a story. So our audience will know this because we're talking about philanthropy and and there's financial advisors there's philanthropists on your numbers tell a story what i love about my own give wise giving fund is that now that i've had it for five plus years my entire giving history is in one spot yeah i have a chronicle and we know <laughs> that the torah we know the we know the bible chronicles important things in our lives and so chronicling our giving is good for the heart it's good for the soul because we go back we understand and if someone asks us at a gala dinner or we're at a gala dinner a year or two later what did we give last time same thing on my phone quickly boom and there it is so numbers tell a story and so people say well who could use a, a daf even if they can't why and why do dafs with no minimums if you can't take full advantage of all of these other complex things how about um my kids who are now 19 and 21 who have had funds for three years now they can see the humble beginnings of giving away a couple of hundred shekels they can see it how it started and imagine when they're well, i'm 50 now so i could imagine when they're 50 30 years from now oh here's here's my my life my life giving um because we keep we keep aggregating those totals for the for the well, you know what? I'm 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 uh, I'm uh, on the professional advisory committee at the Jewish Foundation of Greater Toronto, where we've got a we've got a corporate DAF and we've yep. got a personal DAF, and I'm also was a was a trustee there. They introduced a youth uh, DAF for five hundred bucks. In other words, that th th their their minimums are ten under forty five. It's it's it's. Yep. It's five thousand, but you know they. Have, so so imagine a grandparent, and you're just saying that. Imagine your grandparent. You got grandchildren. Just open up a DAF over at Give Wise or my charity fund. Put five hundred bucks. Now the kid has the you know you know the the Bobby uh, Sherman uh, mm -hmm. charitable foundation. They feel like a boss. Like yeah. I, I I have my own foundation, and they yeah. can give. Now what's the minimum amount? that they can distribute to charities in Canada. We already talked about the minimum amounts in terms of starting it. Like how little amount do you have to distribute and how much or what percentage do you have to distribute every donor advised fund every year? Because we do know that there are some distribution rules. Yeah, I mean, that, that is starting in, as I believe it was from January, 2023, the minimum um, that the debt, that the, um, the charity itself needed to distribute to charity was 5% per year. Um, but that is uh, so. For for our, for example, MCF itself would have to would have to distribute five percent of what it's holding per year, uh, which means that not each DAF itself would have to give out that much money. So if you put a hundred dollars into your DAF, uh, you should. Uh, most people, in our case, at least with our uh, cash accounts, most people you know put the money in and then most of it goes out pretty quickly. Um, but if they are holding on to it and they're not distributing at least five percent, the the rest of our entity is making up for that uh, corporation, which is yeah. probably the case with yeah. most uh, big DAFs in, in, yeah. in the country. Yeah, so we we strongly encourage a 5% minimum on each individual account, even though it is an aggregate total. GiveWise blows past that, as I'm sure MCF does. We've yeah. averaged a third every year turnover. So if people are worried, sitting here worried, well, you're talking about all this, like, put your money in and then have it invested. Are you creating a parking lot and are the charities actually getting the money? Um, it's a high turnover rate for us, it's 33%. So far in 2024, um, we have given, we've actually granted, um, our, our DAF is, is actually shrinking in asset size, which is a great problem to have because 
Um, we've granted more than we've give we've brought in this year so far in 2024. Wow. So we're not creating a parking lot. We're creating catalyzation, flow through, and impactful empowerment for donors. Um, and people can give as little as we recommend. I believe it's in our giving guidelines. We recommend a minimum of ten dollars to a charity. Um, and some people want to test out this process. Okay, well. If I just give ten dollars to a chair, I want to try this this whole daft thing out. Um, our 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 software automates it, and so we're moving money for for very very small pennies, and that's why we can allow this um, these small minimums. I think that I think that if you don't mind, Mark, that this some of the things with these numbers are so interesting because I was I was reading um, through some of the materials that are available on the CRA website. And yesterday, they, it said that under 5 million people in Canada donated to charity last year. Under 5 million people in a population of now over 40 million. And so, um, and, and, and what's interesting about what Dan said is that, uh, you know, over the, in 2021, for example, there were about 88,000 grants that were made through DAFs. Uh, and the amount of money went up from 650 million donated in DAFs the year before to $922 million. So a three hundred million dollar increase of money going in, uh, being donated to charity through DAFs, and it's and it's thanks to I really do believe it's thanks to you know entities like ours that are able to uh, simplify the process. Uh, the really interesting thing is that uh, it, you know charitable charitable giving in Canada has been a bit wonky recently. There are um, the amounts of um, the, the amount of donations that are being given in the under one thousand dollar range is dropping significantly from 2017 i think to 2020 to 2020 uh the number of donations under one thousand dollars dropped by 22 percent but the number of donations over a thousand dollars grew by 46 percent and so people are giving less smaller amounts of donations and people are giving more of larger numbers and so that may be why there's fewer people giving but the amount of money that's being given is growing and it's also why i mean i'm in the under 40 category uh age wise and also why i really love being uh, in this space because i can uh, i can try to you know encourage people who are younger who are uh who are going to be uh, beneficiaries of big transfers of wealth in the coming years to learn about the charitable landscape and to try to figure out how best to continue to give uh, that money and i think that's really interesting Beautiful. I, I have a question. Please, if anybody has any questions, please put them on the chat. There have already been a bunch of questions. I do want to, one that just pounced out at me, but we'll get to all the questions. Um, somebody was concerned about, you know, you mentioned about some investment firms that you guys work with yeah. already. And, you know, there's this issue around, ah, my, I don't want to send my client there if there's going to be yeah. some solicitation. Yeah. I, I think it's really important for people to realize that that the firms that you have are just defaults if somebody doesn't have an yes. advisor. Is that correct? That's Absolutely. Right. And we don't consider the donors. So we at GiveWise don't consider the donors to be our clients. One thing we recognize is this: there's, there is a sacredness between the fi trusted financial advisor, financial professional client relationship. We honor that. We get out of the way. We are the background partner. So the donor slash client and the advisor, that relationship is, is, is the one that is um, protected. And there's no way that that donor is exposed to other investment opportunities with other advisors like that. That just doesn't happen. Massive firewall there. And the same thing would go. Same thing would go with insurance advisor. I know a lot of your business would come from insurance advisors. I know I, I refer a ton of business, and and you know, getting back to what you said before, there's so much opportunity in this space that it's kind of they say is if you if the waters rise, all the boats rise too. So we're yeah. we're trying to help each other out here. But I know that there's you know there's not there's none of this nepotism. There's none of this. Just so happens that uh, you know, if people don't yeah. have somebody, you'll you'll offer their services. We, I like to, I, I sometimes like to um, think of us as like I refer to DAFs as like the glue that helps um, uh, financial advisors have stickier relationships with their clients, which means that they are already managing so much of uh, their their clients' uh, uh, portfolios, 
Now they can do a more holistic thing, philanthropic planning, and we can help facilitate that and then and then let them take over. Hey, and what happens, guys, just from a, a administrative side, like what happens if, let's say, somebody opens up a donor advised fund and they're a single person, right? And they've got, you know, $100,000 in their own donor advised fund. And then, God forbid, they go bye-bye, you know? What happens to that money? Who like how how is yeah. it treated with regards to assets and beneficiaries and ownership and taxation and that type of thing? So number one, um, we have a very flexible and simple succession form. So the the donor um, can indicate whether they want their donor advised fund to pass on to loved ones. So that let's say they have three three children, right? Um, and no, they don't have a financial advisor involved or whatever, but hundred thousand dollars, three children, boom, they want each child to get a third or a combination, or they have three charities that they want their fund to be distributed to. And not immediately. They, they, they don't want, especially if these are large funds, they don't want their small mom and pop charity to also all of a sudden have $300,000, um, when their normal budget is like, you know, 120 for the whole year uh, for revenue. So, so then they could just, they can leave instructions with us to distribute that over the next 10 years, 20 years. And we just put it into our system because we grant out funds. That's what we do day in, day out. We, it's very simple to go into our automated system. So the flexibility is massive for succession of these, of these donor advised funds. And then, um, and then the idea, one thing that Adam talked about was um, just in terms of the financial advisors, one thing I will encourage financial, financial advisors, there's all kinds of data and evidence out there that financial advisors, once they bring the, strate the philanthropic conversation in with their clients, it glues, we talk about the glue, it glues and creates a deeper relationship with the client and it invites the idea of generational thinking so that the client is ready to introduce the financial advisor to their children because all of a sudden legacy becomes involved. Absolutely. No, it's, it's, so, it's a great point. Adam, did you want to say something on that? No, listen, I, I, I my, my, I, I'm an estates litigator and this is, uh, and it this is, is your wheelhouse. Stress, it's yeah. stressful. You should have seen my hairline before I started practicing estates <laughs> litigation. Yeah, uh, it is. Uh, but legacy planning and, and estate planning is so critical and it creates such a and, and so it so it's important in this case. We have also when you set up a growth account, we have a pretty simple form about uh, also when you're setting up who is going to be your your designated um, um, advisor um, if you were to pass away. Um, and, and, and and just like Dan, we take we take this stuff very seriously. Um, it also helps to make sure that someone has their wills and, and legacies set up. Uh, to make sure that it's all taken care yeah. of. Yeah, and as an advisor, guys, look at to me the most important thing is there are a lot of people who are sort of like they stick to their little knitting. You know, you, you can have a lawyer that's just doing wills and not talking about philanthropy. You can also have an insurance person that just sells insurance but doesn't talk about planning or an investment person. It's just you know, really, the, what we're trying to get here is that strategic philanthropy or charitable plan giving is no longer just some sort of nice little thing that you do. You know. We're talking about taking people from success to significance and creating more of a, like that. a how do you want to be remembered, you know, and, and setting up a strategy in place and making sure that it's the most tax efficient and cost efficient way of doing it. And more importantly, that it's easy. It's simple. That's why I'm hoping that today everybody gets in touch, you know, go on to mycharityfund.ca or givewise and just open up your fund and you'll see how easy it is. I want to move on, guys, just because. It's uh, 1244 and we've got another 15 minutes. Uh, you know, uh, people did talk about um, what what's involved in terms of costs and whatnot. I'd like to, I know that you guys are in the same category. There is a cost that's associated with, with, um, with setting up or not setting up, but certainly in terms of just managing the procedure, which is really, you guys have to take care of your overheads and all the rest of it, correct? Yeah. Um, so GiveWise is free up to $25,000 to encourage the average Canadians, like 95% of Canadians, that's where they're going to give. So free up to $25,000 balance um, to use, no cost. Like, And the charities don't get charged to receive money from GiveWise. So charity receives 100% 
of the designated dollars out to them. Where our costs are involved is over 25,000. It's a declining uh, tiered fee structure. So first 500,000 is 1%. The next million is half a percent. And this is available at the bottom of our website under fees. Like, you know, so you don't have to memorize this or anything if you're thinking about comparing. And then anything over 1.5 million is charged at 0.3%. And if you've got a three to three plus million dollar DAF, call us and we'll talk. Fantastic. And I know, Adam, you guys are kind of in the same. Yeah, very similar. Like this. it's very similar. So, you know, obviously uh, do your research, do the look and and try it out. I will just say that I've looked at a lot of sites and the navigation of both of your sites is extraordinary and extraordinarily easy. So kudos to you. What I'd like to do is just to kind of like flash through some things. We we all think about giving cash checks and credit cards to to charity, which, you know, unfortunately is still being done by 97% of the population, maybe 98% of the population. And it really is the most, it costs you 50 cents on the dollar, right? Really, it's 50 cents on the dollar to give. Whereas to me, the most, uh, you know, also hidden secret in our country is this idea of donating appreciated non-registered securities. Well, that would be stocks, uh, ETFs, mutual funds, segregated funds, they've, they've appreciated, and, and whether it's owned personally or corporately. Donor advised funds is the perfect address for the donation of these if you're not ready to give directly to a specific charity. You just want to put it in a place and then be able to distribute it afterwards, which really means, especially whoever's listening, come the fall, September's going to be fast rolling around, September, November, December, you're going to know, do you have a tax bill that's due in April next year, right? Set up a donor advised fund in the fall and deposit a whole bunch of stock. Why? Because when you, if, if somebody had an example, they, they bought some stock, it's at a hundred thousand dollars and to 200,000. If they were to sell that stock, they would pay $27,000 of tax, capital gains taxes. But if they donate that stock in kind to their donor advised fund, they pay no capital gains taxes. They get a charitable receipt for the full market value. And that donation receipt can now be used to mitigate up to 75% of their net taxable income. How easy is that? And if you love the stock so much, buy it again. Yeah. yeah. Is it like, is it like to me, it's like, it's no brain stuff, right? Oh, it's, it's, there's, you know, I always like to tell people there's four, there's four, re, there's four reasons to donate securities. One is, as you said, you get a tax deduction for the full value of what you've donated. So in your example, the full 200,000, you're, you're not paying any capital gains taxes. Number two, number three, securities can be overwhelming and complicated, but in this case, you've now made it incredibly flexible that you can have, you know, that guidance and control to, to, to do, direct that money to any charity you want. And the fourth thing is it's it's incredibly simple because of the the resources that are out there. And you guys, and just as somebody else that most people who are listening don't know, giving corporately your 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 securities corporately are even way better than giving personal assets. Why? Because remember that example I said about the hundred thousand now becoming two hundred thousand, and you don't pay any capital gains taxes. If you donate corporately in kind that capital gain of $100,000 gets credited to the corporation's CDA, their capital dividend account, and now the person can take $100,000 out of their company tax-free. If they would have taken $100,000 out, they'd only get 50 because it would be taxed. So now, yeah. so we have a lot of investment people that we work with who will work with, let's say, incorporated professionals or whatever, and use their appreciation in stock and donations to fund their lifestyle expense because they're getting money out of their corporation tax free. Well, just put that aside for a sec. RSPs, RIF donations. There are a lot of people, guys, I'm sure that, you know, once they turn 71, they start receiving their RIF. A lot of people don't need that money necessarily, and they're going to be taxed on it very at a very high level. So if they've got a million dollar RIF. It's going to get, they're going to be receiving $50,000 of money they don't need that gets taxed and reinvested and taxed again wouldn't it make more sense for them to take that fifty thousand guys and put it into their donor advised fund i fully agree fully agree and you know what's interesting about all of this list 
is if we think of it from the charity standpoint, imagine a poor charity that's just trying to do some good in society. And then there's all this comp, these complex financial functions. Well, use a donor advised fund because this is what we do all day, every day is process these kind of complex gifts. And then the charities just receive, at least from, from GiveWise, the charities receive it via EFT as cash. So they are not having to play financial wizard wizardry here in order to make this all work. So by using a donor advised fund and then, you know, getting the, the everything converted to just Canadian dollars is, and then granting it out to your charities is easing the, the administrative burden on your charities greatly. Um, a couple of things that, um, are not on this list are, um, so cryptocurrency, uh, GiveWise has recently started receiving cryptocurrency. Wow. We know it's, uh, hey, there's there's all kinds of, it's a long process to, to do it, but we do it. And then, um, or a multi-step process. It's not long, but it's multi-step process. And then something that's not on here is um, resource mining flow through um, donations. So utilizing yes. the amazing, tax savings from investing in Canadian uh, important industry in Canada, resource development, mining, um, you, you combine those with uh, those donation um, credits, tax credits with donation tax credits, you combine them, it catalyzes and oh, it's, it's lowers amazing. your cost of giving yep. exponentially yeah, yeah. to be very, very, um, we've seen it, we've processed many yeah. millions of dollars worth and they have an advanced CRA ruling on this, it works. Yeah, and we're, so we, we, we're going to be having a, a, a Philanthropy Friday where we're going to bring on, I mean, there's some great people, Pear Tree, Bear Tove, yeah. Oberon, WCPD, Sprott. There's some great uh, organizations out there, but yes, uh, flow through shares, depending on what's available, what jurisdiction, allows you to give it the least cost possible and, uh, and, and do very well. So I'm just going to whip through these, okay, guys? And, we'll, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, with some final thoughts. Uh, there are many people that I meet who have RSPs that they don't realize that their million dollar RSP is only worth 470,000. It's going to be taxed at 53 and a half percent. You know, they often don't need, that means 470 is going to their family. Maybe that doesn't move the dial or they're very wealthy. While they're alive, they could donate their RSP today. Mm -hmm. All of it or partially, partially to their donor advised fund. There's a a form, a government form to waive the withholding tax of 30%. And, and now you, at a cost of three and a half percent, you now have money sitting in your DAF as opposed to taking a haircut of 53 and a half percent if you were to take it out of your RSP or leave it uh, upon death. CPP income, the highest level is about $31,000 a year when people start becoming pensioners. They don't need the money. They get taxed on it they're going to reinvest the tax again, like take that money and donate it to their donor advised fund. Now you have no tax on your CPP and you've created money that over 10 years could be over $300,000 again, just from doing that. Somebody asked on the chat about life insurance policies. This is very big. And we said this right at the beginning, you could own a life insurance policy and upon death, have it owned personally and have it the beneficiary be your donor advised fund that would create a charitable receipt that would save, as we said, for every $2 you give to charity, you save a dollar of tax. Now you've got money that's saving you with state taxes, but now you've got a very, very big fund for your children to continue to give out in, in perpetuity. We did a, a gift where somebody had a $2 million uh, investment portfolio with a million dollars of gains in it. And that was for their kids. They wanted to make sure their kids had that money. But instead, we donated the $2 million to their donor advised fund, no capital gains taxes. And then we used life insurance to replace the $2 million gift. So in other words, the family was made totally whole. But beautifully enough, we saved a quarter million dollars of tax. We created a $2 million charitable legacy. And the receipt save them a million dollars of tax over the next five years. Like the receipt was enough to pay for the insurance policy replacement, 
plus plus and they created money you can see i get a little excited about this stuff guys sorry <laughs> awesome <laughs> Um, what else? My Par Gift. Canada Life launched a pr uh, product, the first life insurance policy for charitable giving called My Par Gift. I was on the uh, advisory committee there. What's unique about it? One premium only, one and done. So here you've got your donor advised fund. For a minimum of $10,000, you could buy an insurance policy that's one premium that has uh, a delta of eight to 20 times larger than your cost of, of putting that one premium in. Plus it creates some cash flow through dividends that you can give to charity through your donor advised fund, or you can access the, ca the cash surrender value in your donor advised fund and give that to charity as well. We already talked about estate taxes, liquidity events. Today, people are selling businesses, selling, you know, um, they're selling uh, investment real estate. The day that you sell it, your biggest payday. It's also your biggest tax year, but it's the year you can be your most generous to charity to mitigate that tax. So look at a donor advised fund as a place to put the money to mitigate that tax and then use life insurance to put that gift that you just made into your donor advised fund back into your family. So and last in private company shares, we're going to have a segment on that. And somebody did have a question. Uh, we're not going to be able to talk about the valuation of private shares at this point, but this is just a small list. And I guess what I'm trying to do is just help people see that donor advised funds are really today a necessary part of your financial planning and a part of your estate planning. And it really has to be. So reach out to these gentlemen, reach out to your professional advisor, reach out to us. We'd be so delighted to help you uh, go ahead and incorporate strategic philanthropy into your planning. Gents, anything else on that? We're gonna wrap up. I'm gonna give your last, your last comments. Mark, uh, I just so appreciate the community that you're building. This is a gift to Canada uh, and Canadians. So uh, keep up the amazing work. I look forward to Philanthropy Fridays. Thanks for making this content uh, available on demand as well, because I can't make all of them. Uh, it's just fantastic. So I appreciate uh, you and your team uh, tremendously for what you're doing to grow generosity in Canada. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Listen, yeah. it's uh, you're doing amazing stuff. Adam, final no, thought? I, again, it's it's cool. after watching uh, after watching you do this for a while. It's cool to to be on uh, on this end of it. Um, and yes. you know, to, to me, I've I've had to keep hitting mute because I have my daughter running around uh, outside my study here laughing, and I don't want her to interrupt but but it's that but it's but she keeps reminding me that like this charity uh deaths are really um for um what we can do uh how to how to encourage generosity for our next generations and how to teach them about what they can do next um and um and, and one of the coolest things about being involved in this industry is is seeing the camaraderie how how aligned everyone is with the same mission and how everyone really just wants to um make people uh you know give charity in a, in a in a much more meaningful way amazing thank you and so interesting i don't want to give you guys some pleasure in hebrew we call it nachas <laughs> which means that we get pleasure i saw mm -hmm. catherine senegal who's a linkedin somebody that i just spoke to at length yesterday she said she already set up her donor advised fund just from this call i don't know how long it took you catherine but was it two to four minutes or was it three <laughs> to five minutes that's what we want to know but she's actually you know there's there's a woman that's crazy because she sees the school system and the private school system and she wants to create a a non-profit to help kids really succeed and we were having a whole conversation about raising money for that yesterday so Catherine, hopefully you're going to put something out on your linkedin about that and Amazing. use this little little piece but just next steps guys i have the 48 hour rule if something resonated with you please do something about it in the next 48 hours at minimum open up your donor advised fund for $10. $10. Can I, yeah. Yeah. Can ahead. I say, um, Oh, Catherine, uh, give, Catherine give, said it was two to four minutes, by the way, Dan. Awesome. <laughs> give voice has a share funds, uh, feature and we have a benefactor that gave us a bunch of funds to give away. So if anyone emails me in the next 48 hours says I watched, uh, the Mark Halpern thing, um, the philanthropy friday they get a hundred dollars of free gift funds for opening an account very cool 
Nice. A hundred dollars. Okay, good guys. I have one of those. So I know it, it's good. So 48 hours next connect on LinkedIn to these gentlemen, reach out to them. Their contact information is available. Um, there's a, a professional designation in the philanthropy field called the MFAP master financial advisor in philanthropy. I'm on the faculty. Neat thing is they've got a special right now, 15% uh, off. It's a great course perfect for the summer. It'll, help, you'll, it'll take you to a different level in your philanthropic practice. Check it out. Our next, uh, if you really want to take your business to the next level and become an expert in strategic philanthropy, high net worth, life insurance, sales, uh, marketing, and, 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 and prospecting, and, and just having a funnel in your business, we have our Power of Platinum mentoring training program that's been around for five years. We've had over 200 advisors through it. Our next group is starting in September. It's an amazing community. I do, I basically share everything in detail. Jim Ruda is, provides 30 minutes of tactical coaching uh, per month. It's really a big investment. Our next Philanthropy Friday is gonna be July the 19th, where we have Mark Borkowski, He's a mergers and acquisitions expert who's done over a thousand divestitures, buying and selling. And uh, he's going to be talking about turning full, turning a business succession and philanthropy together, how they could really be a great combo. Mark was supposed to speak last time on our uh, Philanthropy Friday. And interestingly enough, he's an electrical engineer from trade in his past, and he had a, a, a blackout. So he, he was totally not able to speak. And we, we weren't able to go ahead and do it, which is ironic. But the one thing I do say is learn about this. You know, do it yourself. Collaborate. We collaborate with advisors from across the country, working with charities they're with, or, or working with professionals, accounting firms, law firms, or working with clients. We want to help you to do good and do well together. But the one thing I say is please don't ignore. There's just too much riding on the line. So, gentlemen, thank you, thank you. We passed our time. I know you're going to continue for so long. I want to wish everybody a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us on this Philanthropy Friday. And everybody should just go out there and just be amazing, okay? Because we have an amazing industry, and it's an amazing time to do good. And let's do it together. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Likewise. Everybody have a great weekend. Bye for now.